Hey, diddly holy. Guess who? It's me. And it's weird, because I haven't posted a video in a very long time. I couldn't even tell you how long it's been. Um, I stopped creating videos because I could not work myself up with the motivation. I couldn't, well, etc, etc, many excuses later, I just stopped doing it. I didn't feel that I was able to create things, I got overwhelmed by the possibility of people making better stuff than me, and... The idea of me wanting to do this for the sake of me wanting to do something that I was okay with, that helped me use it as an outlet to express myself, to talk about things, and to enjoy myself and share some of my favorite games and the things that I do with the people out there in my life, really got kind of put to the way... It, it really got left to the wayside of all the other things that YouTube kind of is and isn't at the same time. I stress myself out with needing to get my voice out there rather than just getting it on there. You know what I mean? So, why am I back now? Why did I make the call? Well, part of it is due to a very good friend of mine, Mateus, because he asked me to try to hold him accountable for a 100 videos in 100 days vlogging challenge. Well, no, obviously I don't have a camera other than my phone, and everybody knows that horrible vertical camera recording is the worst and you probably just shouldn't do it. <laughs> Taya, that's I hope that's not what you're doing, bud. Anyway. Um yeah, he asked me to become an accountability partner for him in his own challenge, and I thought it was neat because I'd always been snowballing around the idea of getting back to these videos and what it meant for me to actually do them again because I've tried to remember what it meant for me to start them in the first place. And I think I've finally kind of gotten back to the root of my understanding of all of it, and it was just to create videos of things that I enjoyed, and things that I thought were neat, and the games that I liked to play, and yeah, it was just a little bit of expressing myself and getting that out there. So, if uh, unless you're listening to this, or you happen to be blind, I'm playing Gish, which you might think is strange, because if you scroll anywhere through my channel, you'll realize I've already been here. And the reason I'm coming back to it is because I never finished it. I think I got about three episodes in, maybe, and they were each like only a couple minutes long. Um, I figured if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it right, I'm going to restart everything, and we're going to go back to where it all began. Gish was one of the first gaming videos I ever put out there. I didn't have a customized thumbnail, I hardly had a YouTube icon, much less an identity for myself, and never really realized that if I wanted to create videos and enjoy something, then it should just be me up there, not some persona I've created. Some people can make that work, and all the power to them, I just don't think it's the right fit for me. So anyway, we're getting back to Gish. Um, a lot of this game is going to be post-commentary, I think. The weird way of me doing this is I'm going to record the gameplay and then record my voice almost immediately afterwards while watching through the gameplay. The reason I'm doing that is because my keyboard makes a lot of Who'd have thunk the spacebar would actually stop my recording for my audio? I didn't know that. Thought I didn't set it up like that. Oh well. Um, getting back to things. Yeah, I'm gonna record all the commentary for this game post of me recording it. Because my keyboard is kind of audible. It doesn't make mechanical clicking sounds, but I don't really like the idea of just hearing my keyboard through all of my audio. And I don't think I have the right audio options in order to phase that out of existence. Now that being said, this game kind of goes from laughably easy to extremely aggravating fairly quickly. It's very old school arcadey. You get a couple of lives and after you die you go back to the start of the level or the beginning of the section or you just are dead. There's a couple of different difficulty options. I chose easy. I'm going to start the recording now. So I named I named the the file YouTube because I figured it would be a good way for me to differentiate the fact that I'm going straight back into it. And we're gonna select the difficulty of easy. Gish isn't your average hero. In fact, he's not your average anything. See Gish is a ball of tar. While on a Sunday stroll with his lady friend Bay, a shadowy figure emerged from an old manhole, pulling her away, and into the ground below. Quickly Gish jumps into action. Following Bray's calls for help, suddenly Gish finds himself in the subterranean sewers of Dross. A long-forgotten city filled with twisting corridors, sadistic traps, and some of the most demented creatures imaginable. Life isn't easy when you're a 12-pound 12 12 ball of tar. Here we go, level 1-1. One, one. Alright, 
So there's a couple buttons here. A is to basically protrude these spines that help you stick to walls, surfaces, and even ceilings. Spaces to jump. D is heavy. You can kind of tell whenever Gish makes that kind of uh, grimacing face. And S is a slide. Makes you super slippery and able to slurp, slurp your way down little sewer drains and out of the way. And sometimes just in between certain items that otherwise won't let you pass. Enemies and such. So now there's a weird little kind of... It's not a graphical thing. When he got all inverted and kind of became a Mobius strip there, it can actually be really dangerous. So Gish will hurt himself if uh, if anything, certain enemies manage to touch him or if he gets pinched. So if you get squished by something, provided you get squished enough, you, uh, you'll you get hurt really, really badly and really, really quickly. So sometimes if you're going too fast and you end up folding yourself, you'll pinch Gish and then the game will zoom that you've taken some mass amount of damage and it'll just kill you outright. It's crazy and kind of infuriating because sometimes you want to go fast so that you can traverse certain things and at times it's it's not a lot of fun. There are some levels further into the game here at about like the third or fourth world that are just aggravation inducing. They are awful. They are a basically literal hell and it goes from hey you're dealing with water to hey you're dealing with some poison to hey this is lava it'll kill you. So. In the first couple levels here, it's basically just teaching mechanics of the games, like you can stick to walls, how to cross over things. Those little amber balls that you see everywhere are basically just for extra points. I'm not doing an all-point run, I don't really care about it, and so I'm just going to leave those be. This is showing you that with heavy you can push certain objects around, and with slide you can kind of slurp your way down these little sneaky tunnels, essentially these sewer drains. Here we come to one of the first enemies. These guys are like little trotters or something, we're basically just, if you can build up enough speed, you can crush them moving horizontally, or if you fall on top of them while using heavy, you can just crush them outright. That's going to be important for later. Heavy can also be used to break through certain blocks, but it doesn't necessarily mean that's the only way to break through blocks, as through some of the later levels, you can actually jump up, grab onto blocks that are destructible, and rip them down from the ceiling, or through the ground, etc. etc. Some of them are just programmed to give way when you step on them, uh, which we'll find out at a much later level. Some things become a little bit more nuanced later on. Yeah, so you touch the spikes, you take damage. Which is weird, because I thought I would take much more damage from touching those spikes. I think... Yeah, I started to have a bit of trouble here, because like, it doesn't seem intuitive in the fact that you jump on, grab onto the ceiling, and then you just start to, you know, like, oh, I pushed the up button. It's just going to roll me up. Like you, The back of your ball of tar is essentially still stuck to that slope, so you kind of need to like slingshot yourself forward. And right here you can see I'm actually having difficulty trying to nail down the right button presses. When you're hanging upside down, it almost feels... It, it, see, I thought it would die if I did that. Um, it almost feels like your controls are inverted, if that makes sense. Yeah, see this is one of those moments where if you go fast enough, you can just glide right across everything. Similarly, if you're going back and you replay that, you can actually see that each platform kind of springs because they're held together with a rope. So anything that's held together with this rope has a bit of like buoyancy to it, and you can move things around and actually break the rope if you're moving too hard. So if I was to jump up really, really high and then use heavy and slam down on top of that, I would just break the rope outright. I'm actually trying to guide this guy out, like taunt him out so I can just crush him, and then I figured if I just got enough air, he would come out and I could just crush him anyway, like so. Kind of goes without saying, but in the beginning of this, yeah, see there, see this is like, something that sucks right because like he got launched with so much trajectory upward trajectory that he squished like he pinched himself and he took damage from it you so you can actually pick up enemies like i just did and flung that guy there i'm just trying to kill these things off so that i can build up some bounce and not have to worry about them coming to crush me tried to climb up the wall there but it didn't work it takes a bit of getting used to about how you build the right amount of bounce like i tried to go heavy and then see about if i could build more downward momentum and just slingshot myself up with higher lift but it didn't work so i think the best options for you to jump is to just kind of jump normally like without pushing any heavy or slippery or anything this place can kill you these things can just pinch like a single little bit of you and they'll kill you outright it sucks so these black balls off to the side are used for health those small ones give you 10 health each they are essentially like little clumps of tar that give you more health Look at that air. Oh man. 
So that other file that I had created was actually like a practice file that I've been working on over the last couple of weeks just to get myself back into the group of playing this game and see how difficult slash easy it would be for me to actually play through the levels. Some of the later levels, like I, I spend 10 minutes just getting through this first section of the game. It's no problem. Some of the later levels are like, oh my god, kill me. I've been here for an hour and I'm two levels deep. Like, I, it's it's awful. So if this, if this one first video becomes too short and you're kind of like well you could have extended it in the next one trust me the later levels will be <laughs> more than enough they will be more than enough to suffice for any cravings you have for longer videos slash anything else so it's kind of obvious you need to move this block to go underneath it but i thought maybe we're supposed to go up above those darker blocks off to the right right here beside me you can't actually stick to so those ones and i tried in a little bit you basically just run right off them to like some kind of like slippery brick and that was a secret so i found the extra points cool never necessarily wanted to like right here i can't climb up and you can actually see me kind of spin my wheels in a sense and get nowhere these things are weird but the game was made by edmund mcmillan well not made uh, that's that's not appropriate for me to say. It was uh, the art di direction was designed by Edmund McMillan, and he is the guy that created Super Meat Boy. And I keep saying created. That's not fair to say. He designed Super Meat Boy, I believe, and as well as the Binding of Isaac. Those are kind of like his children. He also had a hand to play in The End Is Nigh, another game that I own and that I would love to play. It's just that it's one of those games that's so time consuming. I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to record it in a like a bite-sized fashion for YouTube because I am utter crap at that game. But I'm learning buoyancy here. So if you hold heavy down, you sink. And if you use anything else, he tends to float. It's weird, but the spikes got inverted. So at some point or another, like those spikes on my body are supposed to protrude, but they're actually inverted towards Gish, and it looks super, super weird. Um, I think it's because we accidentally folded him inside out when we got crushed by those pillars at the beginning of this level. But it looks super odd. Very weird. Here we are, level 6 of the first world. Hey there, look with the cat flush down. It's our old buddy Gish. What do you say, boys? Let's show old Gishy here a good time. Honey bucket style. And I paused the game by accident because I'm a dumb. Gish is like the uh, the silent protagonist. He has no time for your shenanigans. He just wants to rescue his girlfriend slash friend and be done with this. He's had enough rolling around in the poop for one day. So I'm trying to build some height here because the only way to beat this level is to actually crush these things. Thank god they're stationary, but the little dudes they throw out are not, and they can kind of become a bit of a pain. You don't need very much height in order to kill these things. You just need enough to, uh, just enough to, to basically land on them and get a good smush. I think at this point, yeah, I was just like, yeah, to hell with it. I'm just going to come up here, and I'm going to fall on you, and that'll be the end of that. I remember doing this for the first time. I had no idea what I was doing. I think I died here a couple of times, but I could be absolutely wrong. It seemed really odd to me. Like, I don't know. It's it's almost just fluent, the way that it works. The, uh, the game works really well. Like, it, it was a good design, I think, for its time. It just... I don't know. It was one of those games that I played it and I was like, holy shit, this is hard. And then I just left it. <laughs> like, I never went back to finish it. This level is really neat and it's also really fast. It's also the last one. So, there's a little minecart and if you give it a push, you'll ride it all the way down provided you could stay on. And if you stick to it the whole time, you can kind of lean it back and forth and kind of control it almost like a skateboard. It was one of those, one of those levels that they gave you dynamic lighting and you got to play with that. It's weird that Gish doesn't affect the lighting. But it's neat to see the lighting actually work really well with certain things in front of it and behind it and such. Like, we're just, we're freaking ripping right now. There we go. Nice soft landing, no problem there. Yeah, the dynamic lighting was really cool. And I think there's actually like a, um, I think there was hints or teasing or something of this, there being a second Gish game coming out, but it never really got finished. All right, there it is. That's the, uh, that's basically the first little world there of gish and then we're, next time we jump in we're going to be going to the forlorn hollow trying to follow through with something is is the main point of this whole thing is trying to teach myself some value of um accountability and structure trying to put my 
best foot forward and, and keep moving forward kind of thing. So hopefully this is the first video of many, and if I miss one, I owe Mateus a dollar for every video that I miss. That was his agreement with me, and I'm going to pay it back in kind. So for every video that I miss, I would like to make up. Um, I want to thank you guys for watching. Uh, I've been Michael. You've been awesome. This has been Gish, and I'll catch you next time. Have a good day.